Hey everyone, welcome back! We've finally reached it. The OG King of Assault Rifles, the Soma Prime. This thing reminds me a fair bit of Lens and the Boltor Prime. When they came out, they were the new Tom Tom. It's interesting to see how far the game has gone and to see the Incarn Genesis adapters bring back old picks. Unfortunately, I'm sure you've seen the reviews, or maybe even experienced Soma and Karn on yourself. I agree it has some glaring issues, but maybe today we can shed a light on why it feels so, as well as a couple of ways to squeeze even more performance out of this weapon. As always, these weapons are the second generation of Incarnons shipped with the Duviri Paradox update. The only way to get them is from Steel Path Circuit Mode. After clearing the quest and having Steel Path unlocked, you need to pick two of the weapons on rotation to work towards on the Steel Path Circuit Mode. Clearing rounds gives points to point tiers. Reach the appropriate point tier and return to this screen to claim your loot. The Incarnon Genesis adapters have a rotating six week schedule with the full details in this video's description. If you do not get the adapter for your weapon before weekly reset, it will not reappear for six weeks. But if you get the adapter, you can use it on your appropriate weapon at Cavalero and the Chrysalith whenever you want. Keep in mind, attaching the adapter requires Duviri open world materials and has unlocked requirements on the Incarnon tree perks just like the original Incarnon weapons from the Angels update as well. The Soma's gimmick is that it becomes a Boltor Incarnon, except heavily status based. It becomes a hitscan rifle shotgun with near unnoticeable falloff. It has an 8-8 multi-shot dropping to 10% base crit chance from 30. 2.8% status per pellet and for some reason going up to base 3.4 times crit damage. The fire rate also drops to 7. The weirdest thing about the Incarnon mode is how there is no crit chance in Karnon evolution perks. So the massive crit damage stat is hard to take advantage of without Harrow or an Arcane Avenger combat discipline setup to damage yourself and trigger a flat 45% crit buff. The builds I go over today ignore the frame we're using and do not consider Arcane Avenger in play unless I'm explicitly going over interactions. Then Karnon mode has notoriously bigger recoil than the normal mode and also has a fair amount of spread. However, since the raw damage is so much higher at 240 with 30 damage per pellet, the spread is appreciable against crowds. The slash weight also increases from 50 to 60% but this is mostly relevant due to very low status per pellet and we even end up sourcing more more slash from hunter munitions than natural despite just 10% crit chance. The normal mode Soma is very viable due to stronger Incarnon evolution perks. However, if you use the Incarnon mode, I would strongly recommend doubling up on fire rate with one weapon mod and arcane acceleration on your frame. All showcases today using Incarnon mode were actually done without arcane acceleration. The Incarnon perks are not too complicated to pick this time. As always, perk 1 is shoot heads to build a meter yada yada. You can activate this on even partial bar and it will give the corresponding partial Incarnon magazine amount. You can all fire an Incarnon to exit early, but it dumps your bar. The Soma Incarnon only holds 200 ammo and can be shot out quite quickly, lasting only about 15 seconds on a single fire rate source build. A double fire rate build will empty it in about 10 seconds of continuous shooting. This Incarnon ammo is unaffected by magazine or ammo max perks. Perk 2 is actually useful in both options this time. Fortress Salvo grants punch through when armor is above 450. You actually need this much armor to activate it despite the UI saying it's always active in the arsenal. This is perfect for health tanking builds, but more importantly, which of the tree 2 perks you take determines if you run Prime Shred or Vile Acceleration on Soma. If you take Fortress Salvo, you'll use Vile Acceleration. If you instead take Fortifying Bloodshed, you will run Prime Shred since the non incarna mode will otherwise lank punch through. However, a punch through does let you shoot through doors and or around objects and deployables. When you kill an enemy with slash procs, fortifying bloodshed grants 100 shields, which can be over shields. The wording is a bit funny, but basically it grants 100 shields of whatever is allowed, so long as you aren't capped out at max shields with 1200 over shields. This one is perfect for shield gate builds, since Soma shines primarily with slash DPS. The Incarnon mode can use corrosive, but it's a bit copium DPS wise due to gun CO problems and just lack of good crit scaling. Of course, some frame buffs can patch up raw corrosive DPS on Incarnon mode quite well, but I'm trying to benchmark the weapon in a vacuum. Perk 3 has one useless option. It's the plus 50% accuracy. The slide spread actually helps Soma crowd clear better. If you really want to kill something, just get closer to it. Soma is still a rifle and not a shotgun and thus only has slight spread on the Incarnon mode. 
it's still very easy to land headshots and close range head sprays as needed. The Incarnon mode has significantly more recoil than normal, however if you can fit stabilizer in the Exilus, it's very manageable. If you're running a deadhead setup, then you can even remove 100% of the recoil and won't ever need kinetic battles minus 50%. However, stabilizer alone is already controllable enough, so I instead opted for rapid reinforcement for plus 50% reload speed, since this also affects the Incarnon mode transformation animation. Perk 4 is the DPS calculator one, I'm just gonna display this on the screen. Thank you Ninjase, Seely, and a few others for running the calculations on which EVO 4 perk works best on a Viral Hunter Munition Soma setup, be it Incarnon Mode or not. Incarnon Mode is actually always better than non-Incarnon Soma. The gap is consistently about 1.5 times more damage, albeit I'd say the non-Incarnon feels better. The Gold Cells are the highest DPS setups for Incarnon Mode and Normal Mode. I'll explain the Hatasatya bottom row later, so just wait. Fresh Havoc is always the best option, and increases the innate damage of normal mode from 12 to 22 due to the second perk tree to 34, and increases the base 30 damage per pellet of the Incarnon mode to 40 due to the second perk tree to 52. For non-gun seal builds, this perk is a 54.5% total damage increase on normal mode, and a 30% total damage increase on Incarnon mode. Gun CO is not good on Soma, because most of its damage comes from innate damage buffs from perk 2 and 4, instead of the weapon itself. Gun CO ignores these innate damage buffs, making it give much less bonus damage than it should. It isn't as bad as Burst and Incarnon's Gun CO problem I mentioned in my previous video, but it's still bad enough that on normal build, Serration does a slightly more damage than Gun CO without having to deal with external primers. Keeping things simple. Avoid Gun CO on, on Soma and Incarnon builds in general so you don't have to deal with funky math. Soma is not a good heat inherent or raw viral DPS weapon for killing demolists, even if it can. Having only 1680 raw damage per second unmodded and shit crits and status, whereas Burst and Incarnon was at 2200 raw damage per second unmodded. Burst and Incarnon also had way better crits and status. Burst and also was nowhere near being a top tier weapon, but rather the safe general good pick of Incarnons. Hopefully this puts into perspective why I wouldn't recommend trying Encumber shenanigans with Soma. Keep in mind the bottom most row includes Hatasatya calculations. Hatasatya cannot activate, nor is carried over to the Incarnon mode under normal circumstances. This table proves that Fresh Havoc is always the best option even without Hatasatya. Also, keep in mind that Elemental Balance sets Soma to 24% status and doesn't add 24%. The base form is already 20%, and the Incarnon mode is already 2.8. The 24% on Incarnon mode is split across the 8 pallets and only bumps it up to 3% base status each, which is basically useless for improvements. Zeroed in also is isn't worth it when Incarnon mode cannot crit properly to start with and is diluted by Soma's massive original 3 times and 3.4 times crit damage stat. This is the big one. Zephyr Tornadoes can stack Hatasatya while Soma is in Incarnon form. Saren's Toxin Lash can also. This is very similar behavior to Torrid Infinite Ammo with Zephyr and Saren at the moment. No, Zadis Whisper does not work with this. So not only do you get to stack Hatasatya and Tornadoes, but now your crits are 3 times higher even in Incarnon mode. Saren does get the toxic Lash Dot though that triple dip, so that's still super powerful even without crit inherent. Yes, all of these are bugs. No, I don't know when they'll get patched, but enjoy it while it lasts. For all Viral Hunter Munition setups, the optimal flex slot mods are Prime Shred and Critical Delay. Vile Acceleration is used instead of Prime Shred if you're using the Punch Through perk on the second tree. If you're using Zephyr or Saren, you just replace Critical Delay on Incarnon mode with Hatasanya. That's it. If you choose to put Nourish on any frame, you drop the two Viral mods for Amalgam Serration and Critical Delay for Normal mode of Soma. You drop the two Viral mods for Amalgam Serration and Hammer Shot on the Incarnon mode if you're not using Zephyr or Saren. If Zephyr or Saren Incarnon mode with Nourish, then you will drop the Viral mods for Amalgam Serration and Critical Delay, just like before. These will push Normal Mode Soma to 240% crit chance, and Incarnon Mode Soma to 80% crit chance. Arcane Avenger, Discipline is always an option to make Incarnon consistently reach 100% CC to take advantage of the monstrous crit damage stats. Let's get into the builds, as they are quite simple. Basic Normal Mode Soma runs Viral Hunting Munitions always, because the weapon does not have enough raw damage to do corrosive DPS on Steel Panth properly. If you're on a full strip comp, you can replace Hunting Munitions with Serration. 
is the next best in Salon. Or you could go Critical Delay for prettier numbers. It's only a 2.6% peak DPS loss. For Full Strip Viral, you run Infected Clip instead. There's otherwise no space for serration on this build and you're relying on Hunter Munition Slash to get Primary Merciless going. I would strongly recommend Stabilizer to make the recoil easier to handle, even for normal mode. Build 2 is for Incarnon mode of Viral Hunter Munitions. The only difference is using Critical Delaying instead of Harasatnya since it doesn't work for most frames. But if you're using Seren Toxin Latcher Zephyr Tornadoes though, it's the same build as before using Harasatnya. The Incarnon mode has even more kick than normal, so Stabilizer is actually pretty important to have as Exilus. Otherwise, it's the same with Prime Bane Double Dipping Bleeds for 2.4 times more damage. Avenger will make the DPS much more consistent, pushing CC to 75%. Merciless again since a good chunk of kills will come from slash procs. The bonus reload speed also helps the Incarnon mode a transformation animation too. Build 3 is an Incarnon mode of raw corrosive DPS. The previous barrel mods, now they become corrosive elementals. Use 9090s, I just don't have the right polarities to do it. Hunter Munitions can be replaced by Galvanized Scope for higher crit scaling since we're killing with raw damage. Deadhead will also be easy to stack and benefit the 1.3 times headshot multiplier bonus. Since Deadhead also has minus 50% recoil and built in, Stabilizer is no longer mandatory for a corrosive Incarnon build. That's it, cheers. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you not subscribed. I try my best to get you new information out always, as soon as possible like I've been doing with Duviri Update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. Don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.